That is that. I'm amazed that any of you are crossing over to see our miserable faces for another <laughs> half an hour, but you're very welcome. It's good to have you with us. And uh, we are feeling a bit miserable. It's, um, it's a sickener for this team. And uh, there is the cruel bottom line, quarterfinal, 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 save it for four years time, Ireland. But I suppose those of us who've followed the team in detail over the last couple of years understand this is a different Irish team to all the others. And we can sing that till the cows come home. We know what New Zealanders think. That's a sickener for this team. It's, it's a sickener for the country. It's a sickener for every Irish person that supported this rugby team and really, truly felt in, in their heart that this year was going to be different because we thought it was. Mm. And we, we had a team uh, that could have made it different. But it's not. No. And, and it won't be for another four years. And listen, this, this team will pick themselves back up. They're still a great team. And they may go on to win another Grand Slam this year or a Triple Crown or all of that. Um, the cruel the, part is the, that will be used against them. The, of course. But this team is, 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 should be destined for more than a Grand Slam or a Triple Crown. Um, what is going to define Irish rugby now forevermore is quarterfinal exits yeah. and it's we need to we need to get a team that can break that hoodoo. Mm. Something which came up on air and there was a slight disagreement between Shane and Matt if we could dig into it in a touch it's not a hindsight argument on your part Matt you always felt the rest week notwithstanding you always felt it was a gamble an unprecedented thing to just play all the frontline players against the lesser lights. And that's been Farrell's way and he's stuck to it. And you all seem to remark there was a lack of intensity or a freshness maybe about Ireland this evening. That's going to be a question. I don't know how we answer it definitively, yeah. but, but you had your reservations. I, I, I had my reservations in round one of the pool. You did, yeah. Um, only because every other team in the history of the World Cup that I can find I did go back and look. I, I couldn't find all of them. But I certainly know the Australians and and, and the New Zealanders in, in the first one right, right through. In one of the pool games, the rest of the squad played. They didn't play their best team all the pool games and then quarter semi-final and lift the trophy. Yeah. Right? So at the and, – and here, let me say, <laughs> I have the deepest of respect and admiration for Andy Farrell. I want to support him in this time where it's – it's really difficult. I don't want to criticise him. I'm not trying to pull him down. But they, they, Ireland have played more minutes than any other team in the in the quarters, and certainly the big four, and certainly more than the Kiwis. And I just didn't think they're at their best tonight. And I'm not saying that's the reason because I can't prove it, but I'm saying it is a discussion. Yeah, and, and it, listen, it's it's hard to prove the negative, isn't it? Yeah. yeah but, it but I suppose my, the, the sort of counter to that is actually everyone in the Irish squad. You know, Jimmy uh, O'Brien was the last one. Got game time in this World Cup, so it wasn't like they played the full eighty minutes. And there, there was there was a decent rotation now, not as much as any other team. You're dead right, um, and I think you know some of that was Sexton wanting to get game time as well. Maybe some of it not trusting anyone but Sexton to have that game time as well. But um, slightly different this year than years gone by as well, Matt. Where you had, you know, the the cadence of the group for Ireland was the two. You know, pretty easy, I'll say, yeah. um, games um, in the opening um, couple of weekends. Then South Africa, and there was it was a crescendo to South Africa. It was two weeks then. There was there was recovery time. Yeah. And yes, it was a Scotland game last week. And listen, it got pretty loose at the end, but you know, it, it wasn't a complete drain or you know, energy a sapper. And, and I thought, you know, listen, these guys are, you know, you know, highly trained. You know, ultimate professionals. They'll be looking after the body. They'll be doing all the recoveries, everything that they need to do, of course, of course. and they will have been doing very little training. You know, it's not you're pretty. You know, at the end of a competition, you yeah. just don't do anything. You're doing this captain's run, a few throws here and there. You're doing no conditioning. So I think they're capable. I think they're capable of, of putting their bodies through it. Could they have gone all the way to the World World Cup final and would have made a difference? Yeah, perhaps under those circumstances. But I think for this one, I think they had enough now. Yeah. Do we know for sure we don't? No. But they, I tell you what we do know for sure was they liked a the little zip tonight. There was, yeah. there was still a luxury in being able to uh, make some substitutes in that Scottish game. I think the key game was the Tonga one. 
Um, that was the one where we probably would have said, we were all a little bit surprised that yeah. he went so strong in that. Definitely now there's an argument because Tonga, no one was really sure where they were at. They had four All Blacks brought back into their team that were able to change allegiance after the last uh, the last World Cup. And we're thinking maybe this Tonga team is a little bit better than we're giving them credit for. As it turned out, they weren't. We would have beaten them with our second choice team. But that was still a, a big gamble um, to have taken at the time. The other point worth mentioning is there was the ball and play in that time was a lot. Okay, it was it was a in, lot in of ball game, in, so, in that game yeah, tonight nice, that we just yeah. watched. Ireland made I think sixty seven tackles in the first seven minutes. Wow. Okay, so remember New Zealand came out of the blocks. Yeah, yeah. Ireland were under the pump. Tackle, tackle, tackle. That takes it out of you physically. Yeah. Okay, so the the game tonight, the type of game it was, also didn't lend itself well to a team who may be starting to tire at some point. Um, I think in the review. The question will be in the last warm-up game against Samoa in Bayonne. Is that right? Have I got that right? In Bayonne, they played their seconds team. Was that the day you play your first team? Give them the week off, don't play them against Romania, and then you get them going. Because as Shane said, they had to peak or be ready for South Africa. Now, we're talking in – and I said at the time, we'll only know this looking in hindsight. Yeah. yeah. But I, I – I, I think it's going to come up in the review. One of the, one of the points was that Ireland didn't go especially well in Bayonne that night. No. And maybe Andy Farrell had planned to give more secondary players time against Tonga, Tonga but on, on, you know, All Blacks returned and just, that was not great performance. And, and let's find a bit of form, South Africa around the corner, maybe there was a change to keep yeah. the foot and, down. And that's where the Romanian game, the first game for me, mm. you know, they put 85 points on them. Maybe that's it. Maybe. And maybe we're clutching at straws and yeah. maybe, maybe it doesn't exist. But there, there's, you know, you're trying to balance different things here, you right? You? Because you also want to create um, a momentum. Which they did. And you want, and they did. And a feel good in the camp. And you want to get game time for your key players, some of them who were Sexton injured. Had Sexton hadn't played. So, you know, there, there is a balance. And I'm not sure there is a perfect way to do this. It's not, and because if there was a, you know, if there's a foolproof way of winning a World Cup, everyone would be following it. And listen, I thought we had done ticks, and I, like, I've spoken about this ad nauseum. Every time we're on here, I'm speaking about the milestones that Ireland have hit. So to have done all those things in a World Cup year, mm. so they've done, done the preparation. They've done, you know, they've done what you needed to give yourself a chance to win the World Cup, I think. And then... I think they had to focus on getting out of that group. And maybe that's a, another hangover from never getting out, never getting beyond the quarterfinals because the idea of not getting out of that group was the group of death and, you know, Scotland are resurgent and South Africa are the world champions. That was barely even thinkable. And you're, and you're also then you're thinking, well, what happens if we don't get the bonus point? And does it happen to me in the World Cup in 2007? We had a terrible result first, first time out. Um, you know, we got a bonus point. We played Georgia, didn't get a bonus point, nearly got beaten. And then, you know, we lost against France and, and, it's, and then you're out. Yeah. So I, I can understand until Ireland are a little bit more comfortable in their own skin, I can understand why they went, they did what they did. And I, I ultimately don't think it impacted this performance from a fatigue perspective. I think two things affected this performance most. It was, you know, I think the way, the performance of New Zealand, which was, I think, you know, exceptional. And it, was, it hit Ireland in the areas that they need um, to go well in. And, and rook time was one of them. Yeah. And then second, there was no doubt there was a constriction of Ireland's gameplay. And when it's Sexton taken to the line or that first pod taken to the line, they didn't do it as efficiently as they had, as we'd seen many, many times. Oh, we'll play the devil's advocate. Last point, New yeah. rested the rest of a lot of their players on yeah. the way through. Yeah. But they did. Look, yeah. I get your point and you're right. They had an easier but, group. But whatever, for whatever reason, they do have to look and say, why was that performance today sub-maximal? That, because as Robbie said, they had to play, you know, in the high 90s to win that game. Mm. They didn't. Mm. They were full of courage and full of effort and they came back and they were beaten four times and got up. But they were sub-maximal. The point stands. Okay, fellas, that's all. Very fair. Andy Farrell has finished his press conference. He's now with Tommy Martin. Andy, we've just spoken to some um, really emotional, really devastated uh, players in there. I know it's your job to, to pick them up. Um, what have you been saying to them? Uh, just You just try and be honest and, and reflect properly. 
without the emotion, you know, it's a, obviously it's an emotional time because for this group it's it's the end, isn't it? For a couple of people uh, retiring, etc. And um, you know, if if spots and maybes and the bounce of a ball and held up over the line, etc. So close, but yet so far away. And so there's there's a lot of emotion within the dressing room, but. You just try and get them to back to reality that they should be unbelievably proud of themselves. Everyone that's been associated with the team, the team itself, the squad, the staff, and and the fans, the fans alike. You know, one one big family, um, uh, trying the best to to um, to do the country proud. So I couldn't be more proud of them. Josh said that you told the team that they shouldn't let this defeat define them. Is, is that because of the quarter-final record that you don't want them to be to, to be categorised as another Irish team that that fell short, that didn't do it when it mattered? I don't, I, I, you know, I don't buy into that. I don't care about that. That was a hell of a game, and you know, probably fitted for a final. So, um, yeah, you know, the, the bounce of a ball that goes into Dan's hands or held up over the line. We're talking about a, a different story, aren't we? But that sport, that's why we love to hate it, hate to love it, etc. And uh, somebody's, somebody's got to lose. And unfortunately for us, it's, it's, um, it's not our night. But congratulations to New Zealand. I thought um, they played a, um, a wonderful game, as, as did we at times. Do you have any regrets um, about anything in, in the preparations? I know there'll be reviews into these sort of things. Um, there was a lot of talk that maybe some of the frontline players had played more minutes than, than other teams. And, and, and then this evening that New Zealand maybe were dominated in certain areas early in the game before you guys got started uh, you know, on, on the scoreboard after about 20 minutes. You know, all that will be considered, will it? Well, of course, yeah. That's, you know, um, I'll obviously review myself uh, first and foremost um, in the in the in the coming days, etc. Um, but if you're asking me about regrets, I don't think so. I mean, um, I think we give a a fairly good showing of ourselves, and the players uh, have done done the country unbelievably proud. Just a word then on on Johnny. I know you've spoken about him many times in the build up to this, but he goes away now, deeply emotional. Just a few moments ago. Um, he's contributed so much, hasn't he? Oh well, um, you know we haven't got time in a short interview like this to to, to reflect on Johnny Johnny Sexton's um, time in an Irish jersey. First and foremost, um, the love that he shows for for playing for his country is he, is reflected on how he how he acts on a daily basis. And the biggest compliment that I can give to him is that um, his time and what he's done over the years. Certainly, with this group, will will live for a, a hell of a long time because his influence that he's had on on his team uh, will last a lifetime because um, of how he of, of how he conducts himself as a as a as a professional and a bloke and uh, and the fight of the want to to to, to do right for Irish rugby um, has been immense. I've never seen nothing like it uh, before, and that will certainly live with me for. For forever, um, is a true legend of Irish rugby, and I'm rightly so, probably the greatest of all time. Thanks, Andy. Commiserations. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Cheers. Lot. Andy Farrell there with uh, Tommy Martin. So he's going to go away, Rob, and uh, reflect and review and lick his wounds and think about it. It's interesting listening to Josh van der Fleer earlier on. He's talking about going back to the provinces and. Just starting all over. How long off will these players get now? It's the job, Joe, isn't it? You know, you don't... They'll, they'll get a, a week off, 10 days, maybe, and then they'll be back into the provinces and, uh, and, and go again. They'll get a bit of time off for Christmas, but they'll have to get on the horse pretty quickly, and it's, it's really tough. I've done it plenty of times. Um, your whole pre-season, the last six, nine months, everything was building up towards the World Cup. And when you fall short and the following week you have to go back to your club and you know try and find some sort of motivation somewhere yeah. to get up and go again it, it, it can be it can be difficult but you know that's that's the there job. can be a comfort in it as well and if I sort of went back after 2000 
seven different circumstances mm. and you know was mortified after the World Cup and I couldn't get back into playing fast enough because I just wanted to get rid of this you know this monkey that was on my back whereas these guys will be more reflective on wanting to extend their their time you know extend that experience because it was so good for them and, mm. and um, it'll be it'll be tough. Listen, they're not going back down to mine. They're going to play professional yeah. rugby. Yeah, no, so, it's true. It's true. The and Cup. Yeah. I, I, I suppose though, they're not playing zombie at the end of Ospreys away on a cold Friday <laughs> night. It's not. It's not quite the adrenaline buzz. It, it, it's like a retirement, Joe. Like it, it's what's what's your mission? So they've had a mission, you know, pr probably for a couple of years, mm. and it's culminated, as Robbie said, over the last few months. Their mission was lifting the Web, William Webb Ellis Trophy. That mission gets ripped away from you weeks before you expect it's not going to happen and you, you're in this void. As I said, it's like a mourning. You, yeah. You're trying to mourn the loss of that mission until you can get your head around what's the next mission. Now, if you're a club like Leinster and Munster and the Irish clubs, you know, Heineken Cup, okay, we start focusing on the next mm. mission. But that takes time to let one go, mourn it and come to another one. And that's what good coaches do. Leo Cullen uh, at, at Leinster with Josh, You've got to take those guys and refocus them somehow. And and what the uh, Irish coaches are fantastic at is saying, like, Shane, you can play next week, mate, because you need it. You take two weeks off. Take your wife. I'll see you in two weeks. They don't, it's not the same for everyone. Mm. And I think that's that's what makes the management of the Irish players so good. Because, again, remember, we're, we're going to be sitting here before we know it and Six Nations again. And that will come really quick. So... It, it is hard, but right now they're in a, a, a very dark place, a very, very dark place. Can I say how impressive Andy Farrell was, the way he's answered the questions yeah. and the way he's conducted himself there? He's in a dark place. Yeah. He's heartbroken. But the, good, the great leader he is, he's putting his players first and putting a great show on because he's hurting. Do you know what I think is the hardest? You know, it was for me that you're with a group of players and some of these guys will be your, your best, best friends, you know, and you... Talk about you know whatever analogy you want to use, going to the trenches with them, and then there's there's a a point in the future, and it mightn't be straight away. It might be at the next Six Nations and get together, and a couple of those guys are gone yeah. forever, mm. yeah. and uh, then you realise things have irrevocably changed, yeah. and and that is is almost kind of a, of a more a morning in that that you can, things will never be quite the same. This group yes. will never be this group again. That's right. It's an individual group now. And that happens, you know, generally on a yearly basis. But, um, you know, with the World Cup, it's the culmination of four years of that. And, of course, there have been players that have come and gone. But generally, there's a very cohesive group that have been there a lot of time. And those bonds are deep. And then there'll be guys sitting around. There'll be a train. There'll be an um, Ireland session around Christmas. And they'll be looking around and they'll be like... She says, no sex in, sex yeah, in here. Yes, yeah, yeah. No Keith Earls. No, no, no Keith Earls. No, I, I, was, yeah. I, I was that soldier in 2019. And honestly, there's guys from that squad in 2019 that I have not seen since Tokyo. Yeah. I'll bet, Since yeah. that changing room. Yeah. yeah. And you'll do, you live in each other's pockets. You'll do anything for them for yeah. that six months leading up mm. to it, building up to the biggest thing ever. And then you never uh, see each other. Yeah. You just yeah. Get that, that team's never to gather again, except maybe for a reunion but, but, or something. But even if you do, Matt, and I, I had the experience that, that uh, some best friend, Dennis Hickey, was uh, retired in that World Cup. Mm, and, 07. Yeah, in 07. And you just don't, ah, oh, actually, it's not just I won't see him in Ireland camp, but he's, won't, he's sitting next to you, you know, or you know, driving together to training. And that is, that's a period of your life that's over. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, that's tied up in all these emotions. You see, you see Sexto there, you see him like, you know, almost in tears. And you see even Andy's developed relationship with all these players and, mm. and uh, Josh being very re reflective as well. And, and that's all swaying around. And then you've got, you add in the other layer of all the stuff that's going on in these guys' families, yeah. you know, and what they put into you and, and how much they want you to succeed yeah. and how much, you know, the experiences that they have, good and bad, for you and, and the, the worries about injuries and everything else. And, you know, we, they will all have, 
have a visualized because you know they have to be positive all visualized yeah. in yeah. you know semi-finals and finals so it is an incredibly emotional, emotional. time yeah. and it's and it's difficult it's difficult for them and i feel for them i'm, I'm heartbroken for them. Yeah. yes you can see it in johnny's little black there you know he was in tears too i know, you know I mean, very, probably his very last very time good. going on to the pitch yeah. you know and all that yeah. kind of stuff but i mean look, shane you're right you did you did just subtly a layer of perspective and all this as well yeah. it's not going down the mine and we are seeing horrors in the world over the last yeah. week that yeah. we can yeah. scarcely um, think about. So in that context, it's, um, it's but, worth remembering perspective. But it's also sport takes us away from those. And that's yeah. why we love sport as yeah. well, that it isn't those things. Yeah. And it allows us to, you know, fantasise about what's possible in, in a very joyous way, in a very, like, I think, a, a fair way, mm. you know, because it's sport and it's, you know, it, it's... You know, you're either good enough or you're not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you put it all, all on the line. But, yeah, it takes away from the realities of what's going on in the world. And maybe, you know, it's more important now than ever. Yes, yeah, a couple of hours away from the reality. Very understandable at the moment if people crave it. Uh, let's just show you the route to the final as it stands. Needless to say, not the picture we had been imagining. New Zealand march on. Argentina march on. They on the ropes as well today against Wales. It was looking ominous. So that's one semi-final, and then England-Fiji is tomorrow, followed by France-South Africa. I mean, we're all navel-gazing here. Could be one of the Team great quarter-finals of all. Two Southern time. Hemisphere teams so far. No, and there was a lot of talk of it's yeah. going to be a clean sweep for the Northern Hemisphere. Um, France-South Africa tomorrow is going to be off the charts as well, I would think. Any strong leanings? Wow, great game. Great, great game of rugby. I mean, you talk about, we're so disappointed. But I'm really looking forward to that game. I'm really looking forward oh, to that. Oh, I hope France win. I, 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 I France really, I mean, if Ireland are out now, right, which is heartbreaking, come on, France. I admire the way they play. Yeah. You know, I like that that um, not all the teams play the same way. And I like the fact that South Africa play a, a different way. I don't like the way they play. Yeah. And for that reason, I want to see. I want to see Jalabert well, pulling the string. We're going to be France back playing. in a situation tomorrow night after you would imagine another cracking game. Mm -hmm. Two teams going hammer and tongue against each other and utter heartbreak mm. for one of them wow. again. And you you could have the same argument that that's a team who, who played the performance of deserving to be better than, than a quarterfinal. And I suspect England-Fiji is going to be a bit of a damp squid <laughs> in terms of the quality of performances again. Yeah. But hey, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. We are out of time. My thanks, uh, as ever. Brilliant uh, day's analysis from Rob and Matt and Shane. So for uh, Ireland, that's that. Once again, this tournament, though, marches on. We'll talk to you next week.